Good afternoon, and welcome to another Mike Arnold podcast. Today, we're sitting down with Annie Ivins of uh, Annie Right On's uh, Hairstyle. Taking a little liberty there for yes, the corporation, so but for those that want to find you, good mo- good afternoon, Annie. Hello. And uh, we're going to just do some general questions about kind of where you've kind of come from sure. here locally to how you got into business. And then, as I said to you before we started, just we'll have a couple fun questions to just kind of round it out, either in the middle or at the end. So, uh, where'd you grow up? So, most of my life I've been here in Fluvanna County. Um, I grew up in Fork Union. My father was um, the Commandant Head of Discipline of Fork Union Military Academy. Um, And I lived on campus there for 18 years. Um, Prior to that, he was in the Marines, so he moved around a lot. Okay. Um, But he also attended Fork Union Military Academy. (laughs) <laughs> and was one of those cadets that said he would never come back. It was a horrible place. He was never going to come back. And he ended up working there for 20 years. Um, yeah, and we've basically been here since. And I guess just through some full disclosure, you and Mike Arnold's daughters yes. are friendly. Yes. And with Mike being a Marine, I'm yes. sure that there was a little bit of bonding yes. between Yes, we both had dogs named Della. <laughs> and I think he also had Simper. And yes. We had, I, had, I just had Adela, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what did your mom do? So my mother um, also worked at FUMA and she was an art teacher starting out. And then she became the middle school or junior school as they referred to it then, uh, the librarian. And then she actually became the secretary of the Commandant's Department, where my dad worked. Okay. Can I ask you a off-topic question, and that is, were you sad or happy when the Cadet Diner was ripped down? I worked there for nine years. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. Uh, it's one of the places I really I, enjoyed going. I worked at the, at the Cadet Diner for nine years, started busing tables, and then was sort of a, a um, line cook, waitress, do whatever needed to be done by the end of it. Um, but that building was where we had all of our birthday parties and stuff growing up because sure. I lived on campus and that it was right there. And there's where else you got to go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tiny town. Do you have any siblings? I do. I have one of each, both older than me, much, much older. They're very, very old. All right. Um, now I'm 17 <laughs> years older than my sister. So how much is much, much older? No, I just like to mess with them because okay. I'm the youngest. <laughs> My sister is two years older than me, and my brother is nine years older than me. Okay. Not terrible. No. But enough to be, uh, you could say, yeah. my brother will beat up your brother. <laughs> yeah. I like to push their buttons, too. <laughs> so what do, your, what do your brother and sister do? My sister is a kindergarten teacher. At, Here um, in Fulham? Yeah. She works at uh, Central, West Central Primary School. And my brother is um, Deputy Sergeant in... Green County. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So we like discipline in the male side of the family. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> we do. So tell me a little bit about your family. Are you married? I'm not. Are you seeing anyone? Are you a long-term relationship or just... Yes, I have a boyfriend of about seven years now um, who also lives in Charlottesville. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So... Have you ever left Central Virginia or have you just stayed here your whole life, go to college? So my adult life, no. Oh. I've been I've been in the area this whole time. Um, moved around a little, but mostly in Fork Union and then um, most recently to Lake Monticello. And so we'll we'll set the scene now. You you are a hairstylist. Yes. Currently. Yes. But what did you want to do when you were five? I, um, I, I don't know about five, but from the time I was about eight years old, when I got off the school bus, I spent the afternoons in Fuma's Barbershop with Miss Regina, who um, has grown over my lifetime to be one of my very close friends. Um, but I spent... Every afternoon after we got off the school bus, just sweeping for her and just watching. Mm -hmm. And I sort of always knew. It was easy for me. I feel 
bad sometimes for other people when they, you know, they're 18 and they're going to college and they're like, oh no, what do I want to do with the rest of my life? And I never really had that. Did you ever want to pursue barber specifically versus stylist? Um, Because I understand there's small differences there. There are small differences, but being a cosmetologist, it sort of umbrellas over um, what they teach you in barbering school. Mm -hmm. So you get all of the information. Um, You can become licensed separately uh, to do things such as like straight razor shaving. Um, That's not covered under a cosmetologist license in the state of Virginia. Um, So I've definitely thought about it because I think adding that on as a service, and I've actually, Mike has um, Mm -hmm. sort of begged me to do that. Um, So I've thought about doing both and just being doubly licensed, but I went, I went the, went the Cosmo route instead. Well, as someone who has a problem, I have several straight razors, several (laughs) safety razors. I, and I, I nearly cut a freckle off last week as I was zipping along. It was an unnecessary freckle. Yeah, that's how I felt about it. <laughs> yeah. You won't let the police find me. Um, it's a warm towel and a fresh yeah. shave. It's really worth it when it's done well. I feel like there's not enough. I mean, you, you walk in and, you know, there's a laundry list of services that, that women can have done um, in, in my kind of industry environment. Mm-hmm. But there's very few things that that men will have done or openly have done sometimes, you know, they sure men, men tend to be a bit more private about their <laughs> services. Um, can't be telling anyone's stories. But. I, I, I had the great luxury of when I was in college a hundred thousand years ago, I could get a shave and a cut for $7 and 50 cents, Yeah, but you had to be first right? because the water wasn't hot enough for the shave. <laughs> After that, yeah. So that was, and I remember just him dropping away and going, "This is totally worth it." Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, what's your favorite movie? Oh man, that's a hard one. Do you like dramas? I do. Rom coms. I I like I like dramas. I like rom coms. I like anything that isn't too terribly dark. Okay. I can watch some darker things when I'm in the right mood for it, but my boyfriend laughs at me all the time because he loves like dark horror, mystery, thriller, mm-hmm. anything. And I'm like, can we watch another middle aged lady fall in love again? <laughs> Under the Tuscan sun? Under the, exactly. <laughs> Just had her first divorce and she's learning she can love again. Like, that's <laughs> unfortunately. But then I also have like, for the longest time, I was obsessed with um, Mark Wahlberg and Leonardo DiCaprio, and so, <laughs> so there was a period. Things. There was a period of time where The Departed was the movie I fell asleep to every night. And that's okay. Yeah, I <laughs> all over the spectrum. <laughs> that's excellent. What are your hobbies? What are your interests? And I define hobbies as something you pay for versus an interest, which is free. I stole oh, that from Carla. I'm crafty. Okay. And uh, that sounded like a brag, yeah. <laughs> but I like making things and I like making things for people. Um, so I have like my Cricut, my vinyl cutting machine, which is taking over my home and all of its little accoutrement that goes along with it. Um, but I like, I like crafting. Um, when you said things that cost money, I don't know if handbag collecting is considered a hobby. Feels that but way, I mean, doesn't it? When you it, say it costs money, it could be an Olympic sport, <laughs> and I would, I would, I would probably place. Well, no, well, it yeah. could be worse. It could be shoes. It could be jewelry. There, there. I have moments. Yeah. Okay. I should say accessories. <laughs> Accessory collecting. Well, that's good. All right. So one of the fun questions beyond your hobbies and interests: If you won half of five hundred million dollars mm-hmm. in Powerball. Would you continue to work? What would you do with the money? Would you go off to Spain? I'm sort of laughing because I have this thought often. Never played the lottery, but it's a thought I've had. And sure. it's that I would I would keep working. I mean, there are things that I would change about, you know, the hours I work or how many days a week I worked or whatever. But I thoroughly enjoy doing my job, which is a blessing. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but yeah, I think especially for for a while, I would keep working, but I, I would travel and, and do all the fun things on the side that you can't necessarily always do when you are in a normal, you know, nine to seven. We got to work. Yeah. Work, work time. I understand. Um, how did you get, so you told me that you would, you know, watch at FUMA. Mm -hmm. You also told me you did nine years at the diner. So what was the final transition to, to moving over and doing cosmetology? Um, so I went to cosmetology school while I was in high school. We had a dual enrollment program, um, at that time where, we did our core classes in the afternoons, but for the first half of the day, a bus took us from the high school to K-Tech in Charlottesville, um, where we could take our classes and then we would go back halfway through the day and the second half of the day would be our core classes. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that uh, for a year when I was 16, um, 16 through 17 ended up having to quit that program. They had a very strict attendance policy and I got sick and was out of school for a while and um, just carried on with high school. And then I got out of high school and I went to college um, at Piedmont in Charlottesville. And I got my associate's degree um, in general studies because I thought, you know, if I ever do wanna continue my education, it's the easiest to transfer. And after I got my associate's degree, I was like, nope, still, <laughs> still want to do hair. <laughs> so I went, I went back to, um, cosmetology school and back through K-Tech, ba back through K-Tech that I, I was very lucky because at that time they had just started a, uh, an adult, adult education program, um, that ended up working out around my work schedule. So I was working at the diner. Okay. I was nannying at the same time, and so I, I had three jobs while I was in college, which I think is pretty normal nowadays. So I was a nanny, and I worked at the diner, and my mother works uh, for a dentist office, but she had one day off a week, and so I would work the day that she was off. At the dentist office? At the dentist office. Yeah, just doing files and checking people in and checking people out. Um, and so I... I stopped working at the diner when I went back to beauty school. Um, and then from there was kind of a, 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 if people believe in fate, a lot of things or, you know, blessings, a lot of things in my life turned out in a very interesting way to all sort of just go together. Mm -hmm. Um, the lady I was nannying for was looking to have someone on full time. And with my other jobs and with um, school, I couldn't do that. And so uh, she and I were talking one day and, and I told her I was going to beauty school and she said, my hairstylist is looking for an apprentice. And that's how I ended up in my first um, big salon. I had worked at a small salon out in Fluvanna okay. as a shampoo girl before then. There are not that many salons in Fluvanna. There's not. <laughs> there are not. But it was a wonderful place to start, and I got to know a lot of good people. And then um, I moved into my first salon in Charlottesville. What salon was that? It was at the time that I started working there. It was called Bella Boutique mm -hmm. on um, First Street on the downtown mall. And um, about three years into working there, the ownership changed and with that, the name changed, and now it's Roots. Okay. Yeah. No, I remember Bella just from my time on the mall, but I yeah. don't know Roots. Yeah. So d did you develop a mentor at, at any point during this process? The women that I worked for at Roots, um, at Bella Boutique and Roots, were wonderful. Um, they taught me a lot. I mean, you learn, you learn when you're in school, Mm -hmm. but it's the basics and the rules really it, um, they you know sometimes hairdressers so you have to learn the rules so you know which ones you can break <laughs> and how to break them safely um, but working hands-on is different and they did they trusted me um, you know with some of their clients while I was building uh, because they were all constantly booked mm -hmm. 
So if one of their clients needed to reschedule or something and they didn't have anywhere to put them in, sometimes they would let, you know, allow me to apply their color or um, do some highlights or you know, even trims, um, which was very nice, you know, starting out. What would you say is your, is your specialty? Is it, is it doing color? Is I love it, color. Is it? Yeah, I do. I, I, um, I don't think there's a kind of color I, I don't like, and there's many different application processes. But I really do. I like, I feel like you can see a really big change sometimes, but also make incredibly subtle changes and still give someone a completely different look. And sure. I, I enjoy that. To that point, um, I will ask a question that I think every woman grapples with. I know my wife has grappled with this, and that is. Have you found that whatever hair that you have or a client has, whether it's straight or curly, they want the opposite. So if you have someone with a curly hair, they want their hair straightened. And if they have straight hair, they want some curl in it. Have you found that to be true? I, I have. That's, I find it very true. Um, but I also make sort of a terrible joke that I hope that never stops. <laughs> because Keeps you going. that is what I do. I give people the hair they wanted but didn't have or you know try to anyway how often do you tell someone you can't do that your hair hair just won't do what you want to do um so I, they, I, I wouldn't say very regularly but for the most part if you explain to people why you think this wouldn't work i'd say 90 percent of the time they'll agree with you and make that choice themselves how long does it take to develop trust where a client will trust you to just go in and you cut or you color or they, they give you a framework but then allow you to to see um, the vision? I think sometimes clients have more trust than than I do. And and by saying that I mean I will have someone come in and sit down and say, if I just allowed you to do whatever you wanted, you know, what would you do? And that's not how my brain works. My, my brain goes into what's your daily styling routine or what are you willing to do mm -hmm. daily? You know, what kind of products do you use? How often are you willing to come in to maintain this? I have so many follow-up questions that I couldn't just... Just go. go. I mean, I obviously have something in my head mm -hmm. that, that I'd be like, oh, I would love to do this to you. But it could go completely opposite from what would work with their lifestyle. And that's what we want to try not to do is give someone something that, yeah, it looks great when you leave the salon, but then you go home and try to style it yourself. And it, you it's can't. not doing the same thing because, you know, your arms are attached to your body and mine are not attached to you. Right. So, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's uh, an interesting thing. But there are some people that come in that are skeptical which I completely understand, especially with larger changes. Well, what's, we have not talked about, what's the name, you know, where can they find you? Sure. Yep. Um, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram at Annie Wrighton Styling. And writing, Wrighton is spelled just like right on. Um, yeah, Facebook, Instagram, and there are links on there that will... Um, send you to any of my information that you would like to know. So what what led you to make the jump from working for other folks to working for yourself? And that's been what, two, three years now? Just coming on three years? Um, just coming on two. Yeah, okay. I, I opened, um, uh, first day in business was March 15th, 2020. <laughs> so I, I opened and then five days later, you know, government shutdown or lockdown started. Um, questionable timing, for sure, but ended up really working out in my favor because of how my building is set up. Um, we I work in a building that's considered salon suites. So we're all sort of, um, there's five different businesses in there. Three of them are hair salons. One of them is an esthetician. And one of them is a nail technician. So we're like your one-stop beauty shop. And um, these women that I work with are lovely. <laughs> and it's, it's hard with, with a creative business 
people um, having strong personalities and sometimes not getting along. And since we're separate businesses, people worry about like stealing clients. And it's the complete opposite of that. It's more of, um, you know, it's the same sort of thing it used to be at Roots. Um, but the reason I sort of decided to switch was I had gotten, I think I had gotten too comfortable. Um, and there were some creative differences and um, I'm the first to tell you I'm incredibly hard-headed. <laughs> and so... Whether, Find a business owner who's not. <laughs> yeah, whether I'm right or wrong sometimes, I'm going to fight my point. Um, so I, I just decided it was time to try something different. And I had had several friends say, you know, why? Why are you um, still working in a commission-based salon when you could be out on your own and mm -hmm. trying new things? And I think I was scared. Sure. for a long time and then finally just got sort of the nerve to do it and just decided that was what I was going to do. Did you find that the clientele you were expecting to come over did? Yeah. Did you lose anyone that you thought you were going to bring? Someone significant like this was a person I really thought would come over? No. I mean it was it was it was a lovely transition and I wasn't um, other than you know the being shut down for a couple of months um I, I didn't really have to sweat it and um, because we all e each work in our individual rooms away from other people mm -hmm. um, people I think felt more safe than in a larger salon environment just pandemic wise sure sure talk to me about a, a piece of critical feedback that you've received and in, in the past and, and maybe most often and how that you've taken that internalized it, and then used it to, to grow Oh, I have, I have a few of those. <laughs> um, I had to learn to talk and work at the same time. And as someone who cannot walk and chew gum at the same time, it was, it was hard. You mm -hmm. know, it was like doing a timed puzzle while having to stop every now and then and make eye contact in the mirror to make sure that the client guest feels connected. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I've, uh, I talk for a living, um, and I have learned that sometimes that can be too much. <laughs> Are you a therapist for folks? Um, I like to refer to myself as a therapist, but yes. <laughs> yes. Do you see yourself growing from a one-person shop, though you, you're sharing the sweets and I assume some of the overhead with the other folks? You know, I never said I'd go out on my own. So I don't, I don't, I, I have no idea. Right. I'm, I'm not sure that at this point in my life, I am ready to be a boss. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very much a hairstylist and, and less of a, um, weirdly enough, business owner. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm learning that bit, the hairstylist part, I've always sort of felt like I had a handle on, but the learning about the business, I just, I at this stage, I can't see myself being in charge over anyone else. And if if I did decide that, maybe um, creating a building like the one I work in, where I, instead of being a boss, would just sort of be a landlord. Mm -hmm. And I would also work in that building, so I would want the building to be kept up well. And, you know, they wouldn't have to worry about things falling through because I would be there. Similar to a co-op almost. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you could redo your career, is there anything you would change at this point? No. Okay. Wow, that was quick. Yeah. That's what I, I, every single thing that I have been through or that has happened, including the pandemic, was rough while it was happening, which I find this to be the case with most things. It's rough when it's happening. And then afterwards you think, look at all this stuff I just learned. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that stunk when it was happening, but... And all of the things, you know, I, I am a religious person. I think God had a big hand in lining up the things the way he did that made them play out. Very nice. I've got basically one question. You've answered it, but we're going to kind of really formalize it here. Sure. And that is simply, where do you see yourself in the next three years and five years? Where's the business? Has it grown? Has it maintained? Um... I can't say that I, I don't want to see it grow. How is it going to grow? I'm unsure. 
but I do, I, I would like to see it grow. Well, I'd be interested if you, if you did take on some of the barbering, um, because yeah. it's, it's difficult. Problem is it's a once, a, maybe three times a year for, to go in and just I, treat I yourself. A, a different sort of idea with it in the fact that Charlottesville is a huge wedding area. Mm hmm and I work many weddings doing hair and makeup for weddings. But what do the groomsmen do? Like you why don't drunk. what yeah, exactly. <laughs> but why can't they have a night, you know, or like after their rehearsal dinner where they all go and have like a party and get cleaned up and you know mm -hmm. it's like the wedding for the wedding idea except for it's the men's the men's side of things. With a community like Charlottesville, I think that it's a place where that could definitely take off. I, I'd agree with you on that. Um, Annie, I appreciate you coming in. I don't have any other questions. Um, again, just get the name of your, your salon and how yes. people can reach out to you. I am um, the owner of Annie Wright and Styling. Um, is my doing business as name. <laughs> That's my cooperation. <laughs> it sounds so fancy, but... I'm still learning. I'm still figuring it all out. But I'm Annie Wright and Styling on Facebook or Instagram. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. Absolutely.